Hey, Dan here with the Science SAT School Improvement Team at Porter Central. Wanted to provide a refresher tutorial, refresher course if you will, on the annotated reading strategies that we launched uh, about this time last school year. Uh, we've been working in our SI team and um, trying to come up with a way to make it more efficient and less cumbersome for everyone involved. Uh, if you may recall that last year uh, during the October uh, district science meeting, we had some breakout time and we coached uh, all the science teachers from part of Central on how to go about these reading strategies. And in place of that, uh, this time around, we thought a video would be more helpful so that you can always go back to it and refresh as needed. So with that being said, I want to draw your attention uh, to this page. Uh, you don't have this, but I wanted to highlight a few items with it. I'm going to make it bigger and then turn on the pen. So with, oh, or turn it off. There we go. Um, as it says here, teachers haven't taught until students have learned. And how do we know that they've learned? We ask them to make their learning visible, either by saying something, writing something, or doing something. Participation is saying, writing, or doing something. It's active. And we engage students and get this active participation with some sort of structure. Uh, and so skipping to the visible learning here, the way that we create a structure in teaching students how to do this annotated reading strategy is the I do, we do, y'all do, and you do. And so I'm going to demonstrate that again in this video for you as a refresher. In the I do, you as the teacher will model it. You're going to think out loud, have the article under the hover cam projected onto uh, your pull down screen or your TV. And you're going to talk them through, you know, is the article a uh, experiment or is it scientific information with viewpoints? And then go from there and I'll show you what that looks like. And then once you do that successfully, then you're going to do it with the students. It's still teacher guided, but this time they have the copy in front of them and you can have them answer questions for you like, hey, read this for a moment. Is this article an experiment? Is it scientific information? And kind of coach them through the process that you just modeled for them. And then we have the y'all do it. Uh, this is a structured partner practice or small group task. So uh, table buddies or desks next to each other, have them work together and have them speak out loud with each other, reading through the third article and describing whether it is, again, an experiment or scientific information and proceeding from there. And then lastly, we have the you do it, which is independent practice. So this is for the student just themselves. And you can do this if you have time in class or assign it as a homework assignment, uh, or perhaps even the next day as a bell ringer, they come in, they look at the article, they try to annotate it, and so on. And that's the process that we have going for us. I want to show you next the flow chart. I'm not going to fit that. I'm going to just keep it at the size that it is here. Uh, we came up with this last summer, and we start out, does this article represent an experiment or summarize an experiment? If not, then does it represent scientific information about a topic or viewpoints from one or more scientists? You may recall when we had the ACT that there were conflicting viewpoints, and we think that some of those types of articles might still present themselves on the SAT. And so as this uh, strategy, they'd say, Yes, it is scientific info or conflicting viewpoints, in which case they underline the main idea and put check marks next to evidence that supports that main idea. On the left here, if we go back to say, you know, is this an experiment? And we say, yes, indeed, this is an experiment. Then we have a lot more annotations that we can use. You know, underline the main idea or research question. What is this article about? The experiment procedure, we're going to put brackets around it to indicate that that's the procedure and how to do it. 
any data or results, whether it's in paragraph form, graphs or pictures or diagrams, get a circle around them. We put a star next to the conclusion. We do squiggly underline if there's any weaknesses or limitations. Sometimes the article will say, you know, this uh, experiment was successful. In the future, we could in, improve on this because of A, B, and C. And so we square or put a rectangle around those future applications, what could be done in the future. But we also recognize that there may be some limitations they caught on to and how we might or how they might adjust and improve upon them, innovate, if you will. So let's uh, dump or not dump, jump right into an article. So here we have an example article that you'll see in your uh, coaching set that you'll get soon. This is a smallpox article. And so I'm going to do the teacher modeling. I'm going to uh, read it and think out loud and annotate as we go so you have an idea of what's going on. So Edward Jenner, ooh, that works. Um, Edward Jenner was interested in stopping people from catching smallpox, but he didn't know how such a bad disease could be prevented. He wondered if there could be a way to inoculate people safely. So that right there, he wondered if there was a way to inoculate people safely. That sounds like that might be our main idea. So I'm going to underline. That. I'm going to actually turn on a different thing there. Okay. So you wondered if there could be a way to inoculate people safely. That is our main idea, the question that he's proposing. One day he was talking with a dairy maid, a girl who milked cows. She told him that she had never worried about catching smallpox. Why? Because she had already caught cowpox, which was a similar disease that people could catch from cows but it was much less dangerous and never killed anyone. Dr. Jenner observed and saw that what the dairy maid had said was true. Dairy maids never caught smallpox because they had already caught cowpox. Dr. Jenner decided to do an experiment with cowpox. So this is a giveaway. This is a experimental summary. There we go, EXPT, that's my symbol for experiment, because it says he decided to do an experiment. So he found a dairy made with cowpox and took pus from one of the pox on her arm. Then he made a cut on the arm of a boy named James Phipps and put some of the pus into the cut. Soon James Phipps caught cowpox. A few weeks later, he gave James a mild dose of smallpox. If he got sick, they would know the inoculation didn't work, but he did not catch smallpox. Dr. Jenner had solved the smallpox problem. So the experimental summary here is going to be right in here. The idea that he found a dairy made with cowpox, took the pus, put it into a cut on a boy's arm, and then so he had pus in the cut, and soon he caught cowpox. That right there again is our experimental summary. All right, then our data and our results, our data is that, um, you know, he caught cowpox a few weeks later, gave him a mild dose of smallpox. He did not catch smallpox. That is our data. That one exclamatory sentence, it was successful. So he had solved the cowpox, I'm sorry, the smallpox problem. Oops, and all that disappeared. So I will fix that momentarily. So we did that. And then this was the data. I'd say right here is our conclusion. At first, other people didn't believe him. Lots of people made fun of him and laughed at him. They didn't know about germs yet, but he continued to try his experiment with other children to observe what happened over and over again. Um, he saw the success there. And so that about sums it up. Um, 